So, about a year ago, I got a comment on one of my videos from a sculptor named David Perrin, um, who's recently moved to the area where I live, uh, the Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, National Capital Region, basically. <coughs> And he was asking me if I would be willing to talk to him about it. Foundry, he said no. You don't have to ask me twice. Of course I'm willing to talk about setting up a foundry. Kind of what I've been doing for the last decade. Just every spare minute I can get. I replied back to his comment saying, yes, please, let's do that. Didn't hear back from him. I forgot all about it eventually. Well, I guess it was in the back of my mind at some point because, you know, I was just looking through comments and uh, I found his again. I thought, well, that's weird. I never heard back from that guy. So I pinged him back, you know, hey, whatever happened. Turns out his comments have a habit of just disappearing into the black void. We did eventually end up talking though. And uh, you know he came out to have a look at what I have said. Talked about a project he's got coming up that we thought he could use some help with. I gather he's done a little bit of casting before this when he was in school, but I don't know how much. So I've, uh, I've been helping him out with this project. It's, it's a pretty cool project. He's, he's got this boulder, big boulder that he's, I guess, done some, some work on with chisels and whatnot. But to me, it just looks like a big, long, skinny boulder um, that he's cut into five rows, I guess. It's tall and skinny, this boulder. And each row has been cut down X and Y to split them into four quarters. So that's 20 blocks of this one holder that had been cut up. So what we're doing is he's made um, rubber molds of the uncut ex exterior face of each piece. Plaster mother mold back rubber molds. And he's cast Plaster, uh, thin plaster copies of each face, burlap reinforced plaster, which is what we're using as patterns um, to sand cast enough pieces to replace half of the stone pieces of the original boulder in a checkerboard pattern so that it's like a boulder but checkerboarded with metal. And eventually, the pieces of stone that will be removed to replace with metal on the first boulder will be the stone pieces uh, on the second boulder, which will be identical but oppositely checkerboarded. Right now, we're uh, rushing to get the first boulder done because I guess he's got to get it into a gallery somewhere by a certain dateline. I don't know the exact details of what his timeline and plans are other than for it. He told me something about it that I don't remember. But I know he works with the Eno Gallery. That's O-E-N-O. -O, uh, which is in the Ontario. Uh, down near Sandbanks Provincial Park, if you know where that is. Um, it's a real nice area. 
And it's only a couple hours away from here by car. So that's what we're working on. I hope I explained the. Oh, one other thing the uh, the boulders and their metal pieces are going to be slightly separated by some aluminum tube standoffs. And only the faces of the, the uncut faces of the boulders are being cast. Um, then those shapes are being welded onto aluminum plate to form the form hollow blocks with the aluminum plate as the cut sides of the, the rock pieces. Some of the plaster patterns were able to cast whole, and that's what we're doing whenever possible to avoid the amount of welding and chasing that David has to do. Other castings, other patterns rather, if we try to cast them whole, there's undercuts. So those are the ones we end up having to cut into and mold up in pieces, and then he welds them together. And uh, the chasing process should be pretty interesting, I'm trying to make those welds disappear as if they were never there. Well, so far up to this point in time, I've spent four days out of David's foundry. Ramming up some big molds, pouring aluminum. Uh, he's got an A25 principle that we've been using with the, some really nice two-man pouring shanks and tongs built by a local blacksmith. It was actually like really low, probably not more than 15 minute drive up the road from here, which I'm happy to find out about. I might have actually met that guy a couple of years ago when I was teaching casting at the blacksmithing school. There was a lot of them who would come through for one reason or another whenever I'd be there. I got some some footage from the first three days, but I'm not sure how coherent it's going to be. But I'll throw in what I can. And uh, day four, there might be a little more of an actual storyline to it. I don't know if that'll be one video or several. Probably be several before the whole project's done. Oh, I'm so tired of moving these fire bricks. I've had my hands on each one of these things too many times. But it's going to be nice to have the space back in my casting shed. Anyhow, I'm not going to make you watch me huck bricks back and forth through my yard all day. Uh, here's the Boulder casting project.
stuff down there. Uh. Pour yeah, more right. aluminum than you need. 
Why? The alternative is running out before you're going to school. Yeah. No, no, take pot, hook it. Nobody wants that. Because you, yeah. this is what you're going to use, and that was so you could use it again. Yeah. What's okay. that? It's like a, and I mean, and it's this, like chocolate. And if this <laughs> fails, we'll just saw it into pieces and melt it again. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What is that? It's like we took those bronze well, that's heads. Not happen. <laughs> yeah, how did you do it? Did, did you, did, did you tell Jeff for, about that? Uh, aluminum foil. No, heads. I didn't. Tell Jeff about the bronze heads. So yeah, so I mean, I got rid of them eventually because I didn't have a foundry to, to deal with and I was moving from uh, Winnipeg to Hamilton. But a friend of my, a friend of a friend's father passed away and he was a wealthy man who was trying extremely hard to look even wealthier. So he had like a bunch of bronze busts of uh, his wife done. Okay. And no one in the family wanted them. <laughs> so I wound up with like three yeah. or four of this woman's head in my backyard. Yeah, we're really, like, what are we going to do? And for a while, Why we had them in her backyard. He just shot like in the yard. his, yeah. wa- his no. wife's head off? No, no. I don't know how you got that from what we were saying. Yeah, yeah. he Instead. made a, someone. Made a statue of just someone. Yeah, yeah. A mold. he made a statue. Oh, I get what, I, what he did. So what he, he, he took a mold, he put his wife's bust. In a, in a mold? No, they just had a sculptor copy it. Yeah. And uh-huh. usually when you say a bust, a person's bust, you're talking about their chest. Yeah. Not about their head and shoulders. Yeah. When you you're talk about, about a sculpture. bust of a person, yeah. it is their head and shoulders. That's when you talk about a person's bust, it is their chest. No, Although in, this, this, in context, in this case. In this case. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> French and French <laughs> is their first language too, which makes it even more. Right. Oh, no, we didn't have a touch fire. Alright. Oh, yeah. How many other things do you have to do with that? Uh, that is one of the 20, depending on how things go. Oh, you have to do this 20 times. Well, that's if you don't have to cut any more pieces in half and do them as two. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, if we didn't have to cut any in half, it would be 10 total. Okay. What do you mean cut in half? Plaster. I cut the plaster in half, I'll weld it back together once it's cast. Oh, it's the putting be like you take this piece and saw it down there, so there's two flat pieces instead of one L-shaped piece. Okay, so you're not doing an L-shaped piece, you're just doing one. There's a couple we like to do with L-shaped pieces, but there's some that have gotten such significant undercuts that we can't do it. So because the sand is made so it sticks together really, really well. Really, really well. But I mean, you put it and you bury it, but when you pull it out, you want it like pack the sand around it. Like, like you're building a sand castle. So it's the same way. It's got enough can... clay in it that it holds its shape. But what around. if they're part of this goes like this and then like that? It's like, well, when you're pulling it out, yeah, then you got a problem. Yeah, that's why you have. That's why that's I have to cut That's why it's easy to get cut because it would cause an undercut like that. It would just rip the sand out. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what you're doing. We have demolded it and we got a whole casting here. All right. Looks like a shiny metal piece of a rock to me. Nice. I mean, this is pretty much what you. You want it, right? Exactly Obviously. what I envisioned, yeah. Nice. This is perfect. I don't think I could have asked for better. Woo! I'm glad I had the camera going. Nice. Good. Yeah, it turned out beautifully. All right, cool.